everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 6, section 6.7, and uh, that's entitled Dealing with the Prefixes and Suffixes. And I think he's a bit worried for us all here uh, because uh, he says you need to think carefully about the way that these prefixes and suffixes behave as described in the previous sections and in the previous videos because they're just kind of hard to spot. And it's true they are. Uh, I've got some examples here just from the examples in practice 6.7. But really, I want to give you one hint that will help you with this more than anything else. And it's something I've said lots of times before. You need to learn your vocab. You need to get the vocab down. If you don't have the vocabulary, then you're not going to be able to identify the tenses of the verbs. And that becomes apparent very, very quickly once you think about how the prefixes, the epsilon augments and the suffixes work. And once we just take a look at these examples. So look with me at this one, for example. Um, Ekranzen, ekranzen. Well, if you don't know your vocabulary, what are you going to do with this? You don't know whether the verb stem is kranz or ekranz. So you don't know whether this is an augment or whether it's part of the stem. So you don't know whether it's in the imperfect or whether it's in the present. Now, on this occasion, you could just about get lucky. Because if you really knew your endings, you'd know that N is not a present ending. It's a third person singular imperfect ending. But that's slightly long way around. It will be necessary to have little tricks like that up your sleeve sometimes. But frankly, if you're learning the endings well enough to spot that, you should be learning the vocabulary well enough to spot that the stem is crads, crads. And the verb is cradzo. And therefore, this is the imperfect of cradzo, I cry out. And it's third person singular, so of course it means he was crying out or he used to cry out or something of that sort. OK, let's take a look at the second one here. Again, you've got something similar um, going on here with edioxa, edioxa. Now, once more, it, it's important to be able to spot what the stem is. Now, the stem actually is dioc from the verb dioko, meaning I pursue or I persecute. And what you notice is the kappa has turned into a xi under the influence of the sigma suffix. So the ka, kappa plus the sigma um, is has turned um, uh, uh, has become a has become a xi because that's just how it sounds. You see that in the previous. Um, uh, in the previous video, or a couple of, couple of videos ago, and then you've got an epsilon augment, of course. So you've got a sigma suffix buried in here, you've got an epsilon augment, which means that this is aorist. It's just so much easier to spot if you know your vocab and you think dioco and you think, oh, do, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. And what you're starting to spot now is that the bits of the stem that aren't going to be affected by the epsilon augment and the sigma suffix occasionally doing funny things are these bits, a consonant at the beginning and anything apart from a consonant like that one at the end of the stem. And what was actually going to happen over time, if you get to know the vocab, and of course you remember the pattern of the epsilon augments and the sigma suffixes, you'll get used to seeing certain kinds of tweaks to the stem in certain verbs. Let me give you a classic example of that with this verb here. Can you identify the stem in that? I'll just pause for a second, see if you can identify the stem. Of course, so the stem is blep. Blep. From the verb blepo, meaning I see. Of course, where's the pi gone? The pi has disappeared into this psi because it's combined with a sigma to form the future form of blepo. Bleps and now ete because it's second person plural. So that's a future tense verb. Now, again, let me emphasize it. If you know the vocab, you'll very quickly get used to seeing this and it will come, become second nature to you to regard the ps as just what it sounds like, which is a pi and a sigma, and therefore there's a sigma suffix buried in there. Vocab, vocab, vocab. One more example, let me just talk you through this one. Uh, here's a uh, verb egrapsan. A grapsan. Now, how are we going to pass this? Well, again, find the stem. If you know your vocab, you'll know that the stem is grap, 
um, sorry, graph. <laughs> oh my goodness. The stem is graph from the verb grapho, meaning I write. And what's happened is that the phi um, has turned into a psi uh, with the addition of a sigma. Let me just write that out for you. So you have a phi in the stem and then you add a sigma to it and it becomes a psi because if you try and say fss, 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 starts to sound like pss, doesn't it? So uh, egg graps and that's got a sigma suffix buried in there. It's also got an epsilon augment here, egg graps and, and no surprise then it's got the aorist ending, aorists like alphas and therefore this is an aorist. Okay, so you've got some more examples there in practice 6.7. Let me emphasize to you again, let me emphasize this. If you keep learning the vocab, and you're gonna go nuts with me, please don't thumbs down the video just because I told you to do your homework, okay? Um, thumbs up the, home, the video because I told you to do your homework because it will help you in the long run. If you get to know your vocab, actually what's gonna happen is you'll really start to enjoy reading the Greek. There's nothing so daunting as being faced with a page full of words that you just don't recognize. But if you do recognize it, if you, even if you recognise little fragments, then it starts to be fun to kind of decipher the different words and figure out what tense they're in and that kind of thing. You start to be enjoyable, that's really motivating, and you can sow the seeds of that now by getting on with the vocab a little bit every day, along with all the other stuff you're doing with these videos. So there we are. That's dealing with the prefixes and suffixes in section uh, 6.7. We've only got a couple of other subsections to go. One other subsection to go in this chapter, then we've done the whole of the chapter. That's awesome, isn't it? And then we're moving on to chapter 7. So keep going. Remember to subscribe if you want to get updates of these videos um, uh, every day. And uh, keep going 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, just five or six days a week. And we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless. Bye for now.